Happening this week in Fulton, there's a new absentee ballot request portal for the November 3rd election. We've got important information for those planning to vote by mail. There are also a number of polling location changes for that big November election. I'm Douglas Bell, and I'll have a rundown of the location modifications. And more than six months after the pandemic began, county officials assess the plan moving forward. We'll hear from the manager. Those stories plus an update on the county's effort to get people back to work and production companies back to filming on this edition of Fulton Today that starts right now. Welcome everyone, I'm Shania Chavis Rucker. We begin with how we will begin through the big November election. Fulton announcing changes to some polling precincts and announcing details regarding the vote by mail absentee options. FGTV's Douglas Bell has been keeping up with all of the changes, Douglas. Shania, first things first, as it relates to absentee ballots, to ensure the safety of all residents, the Department of Registration and Elections is referring voters to the new absentee ballot request portal provided by the Secretary of State's office. To request an absentee ballot, voters can visit ballotrequest.sos.ga.gov. Voters will need to enter their driver's license number. The information will serve as their signature, which is required on the application. And what about those who are unable to apply through the Secretary of State's portal? Well, voters can then download an absentee ballot application or go to the Secretary of State's absentee voting page. And there's also the Fulton County absentee portal as well, correct? Yes, residents can also return an absentee ballot application online using the Fulton absentee upload portal. To submit an absentee ballot application, Upload the application on the Fulton County Absentee Upload Portal as a PDF or JPEG between 1 megabyte and 5 megabytes. Each submission must have only one application. And Douglas, for those who want to drop it off in person, what are their options? Fulton County currently has more than 20 Dropbox locations to assist voters in leaving their completed absentee ballot application. Residents can also return their absentee ballot at one of the drop boxes by 7 p.m. on Election Day. Each location has 24-hour video surveillance and recording to ensure that ballots left inside the devices are secure. Trained election workers will collect ballots from the boxes daily. Only Fulton County reg registered voters should use the boxes in Fulton County. Voters in other counties must return their ballot in the county in which they are registered. And let's switch gears just a bit. I understand there are some polling place modifications. Uh, give us some of those details. The Fulton County Board of Registration and Elections has announced changes to several polling places that will be in effect for the general election on November 3rd, 2020. These changes will increase the total number of polling places for the November 3rd election and reduce the number of voters assigned to any given polling location. The Fulton County Registration and Elections Department will notify impacted voters by mail to inform them of the change in their polling site. Fulton County will place signs at the entrances of the original polling places directing voters to the new locations. The complete list of polling precinct changes can be found on the Fulton County Elections webpage. All right, well, there's a lot of election information. So, yes, by all means, visit Fulton's election webpage. Douglas Bell, thank you so very much. Now, the largest county in the state is not only preparing for what many predict to be a big election in November, but officials in Fulton are also dealing with providing health services during a pandemic, in addition to a multitude of other services and even some infrastructure upgrades. The Fulton County Manager is back with us again. Dick Anderson, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Shania, for having us back again. All right, so Fulton had been one of the counties in the state with a number of COVID-19 cases. However, should we be encouraged by improvements in the COVID-19 trends? Yes, I'm very encouraged by the recent trends. I'll give you a few statistics. We've gone from having over 400 new cases a day down to below 100 now. When someone goes to be tested, that testing positive rate was over 
it's now down to 5%. By the way, that's a benchmark that really allows us to do contact tracing in an effective manner. Also, our hospitalizations have dropped. So they've dropped from over 600 to now in about the 280 range. That gives us a capacity of another 600 beds. So all of those trends are extremely positive and we're very pleased to see those. I would say we still need to remain vigilant because obviously we just had a holiday and that in and of itself generates uh, a lot more activity. We also have the fall coming up so that will be more pressure from the flu season as well as folks staying indoors, but these trends are positive. And sir, what is the ultimate measure of interruption of spread of COVID-19? Well, the ultimate measure is the projected death rate. Of course, that's the thing that concerns all of our citizens and us as public officials. And the one thing that I can say is due to our intervention, our very good uh, work with the Board of Health, uh, a program of testing, uh, as well as uh, emphasizing social distancing, hand sanitization, uh, and fundamentally keeping focused uh, and wearing a mask. All of those activities together have resulted in Fulton County having much less of the percent of the total cases in Georgia than we started out with. We started with representing almost 20% of the cases in Georgia. We're now down to less than 9%. And that simple fact drives a projected death rate that's less than half of what it would have been otherwise, and that probably has saved 1,000 to 1,100 lives in Fulton County. So there's no more important measure than that one, and again, we're extremely pleased that our efforts have uh, changed that uh, potential uh, catastrophic outcome. And can you speak now to the testing trends? So the testing trends uh, remain good, and that is our strong suit. Uh, as I've said before, we represent uh, between 20 to 25 percent of all the tests that are being administered in Georgia. We've done now close to 600,000 tests. What that means is our citizens have ample access to testing, and they're taking advantage of it. What we want to do now is really press between now and the end of the year to have as much testing done as possible, because it does really assure us that we're controlling the virus, that we know where the hotspots are, that citizens are getting the best health care. So our Fulton Needs You campaign, which will have 130 million or so impressions across the fall, is going to be extremely important. And certainly it will emphasize being tested, as well as all the other things that we, that we know to do to stem the flow of this virus. So we're hopeful with that innovative campaign and the number of impressions that it will create that we'll see even more testing because today we're testing about 3,000 to 3,500 folks a day. We have the capacity to test 8,500 a day. So there's plenty more capacity. And by the way, our turnaround times now are 24 hours to 48 hours. There's, so there's really no reason uh, that you can't get an appointment or you don't think the turnaround will be quick enough. Both of those things have been alleviated. So we encourage all of our citizens to be tested. And what about any changes in the county's opening plans? So as we think about opening, we are doing some things that I would call incremental. For example, we're putting fingerprinting services now at the North Annex and South Annex. That will be important to help with uh, if you're getting a concealed carry permit or getting a renewal of a permit. Now you can have a one-stop shop at each, e either of those two sites as well as here at 141 Prior. We continue to do things, I think, that are extraordinary on a virtual basis in our court system. Uh, they uh, are doing virtually everything now in that uh, online mode. They are looking at grand juries potentially coming back in the next couple of months, so we'll be working closely with them. As well as, uh, as we think about additional services, we're gonna remain with a safety first mindset. So I didn't, don't anticipate that we'll do anything differently than we're doing today. Uh, we'll continue with our current course and speed as we move into the fall. Mr. Anderson, let me get your final thoughts. Well, I think the final thoughts that I have is we have very much focused on keeping the critical functions of government uh, going. So despite COVID-19, as an example, our property tax bills uh, went out uh, last week with due dates that really do allow the government to meet its financial obligations, both in the city of Atlanta where they're due on 1031 and in the rest of Fulton County where they're due on 1115. 
And that took extraordinary efforts, which many of our functions do now due to reduced staffing. We had equipment problems that the tax commissioner office overcame uh, with, again, just phenomenal effort. At the same time, we have major construction projects, some right behind me where we're uh, redoing the entry plaza as well as the court uh, facade. At the same time, we're re redoing Assembly Hall. Even bigger than that, we have two major wastewater expansion projects at Little River and Big Creek in North Fulton and a study going on in South Fulton for a like plan to expand our wastewater uh, capacity for decades into the future. So while COVID-19 has impacted government, impacted our economy, impacted all of us personally, what my final thought is, is that work still goes on and we're still here to serve citizens fundamentally. And it's just evidenced by all the things that we're doing and the accomplishments that we're making that while certainly the virus and interrupting the progress of the virus has been our preeminent uh, focus and maybe our most important role that we've ever had. And I, would say that we've done it well, all the other functions of government continue on and we're going to stay focused in that manner uh, through the duration. Dick Anderson, Fulton County Manager, amazing what's been done even in the midst of the pandemic. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Sean. Again, I always appreciate uh, being invited to uh, be here, be able to share this information with your audience. And again, thank you so much. All right, always a pleasure, sir. And still to come on Fulton Today, helping seniors navigate through the pandemic, Fulton's Senior Services Director is up next. As many Fulton residents find it challenging to navigate through the stressors of a pandemic, one group in particular is getting some added help in coping with this new abnormal. Ladisa Onolagu is the Director of Senior Services. Welcome back to Fulton Today. Thank you for having me today. Well, since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Fulton County Senior Services has, in fact, implemented several virtual programs like line dancing and cooking classes and arts and crafts, as well as, of course, some music classes. But how have these programs worked to help with residents and their, their willingness to want to stay active? We now have over 80 classes offered each week to senior residents uh, live, facilitated by our instructors, and they're extremely helpful to senior residents uh, in ways of seeing each other, um, being able to communicate with one another at the end of a class, but also just maintaining their physical fitness and their uh, emotional health during this pandemic. And I understand from reading my notes from your department that social isolation and loneliness carry the same health risk as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, as well as an increased risk of premature deaths, though, what has Senior Services put in place to help mitigate this risk with Fulton County residents? COVID has given us an opportunity to offer wellness checks. We did not do this before the pandemic, and we implemented it because we wanted to keep in touch with the seniors that we used to see on a daily basis. It's actually served very well to uh, reduce isolation. It gives the seniors an opportunity to share uh, how they're doing um, and how not only our classes are impacting them, but just to just to get a, a feel of where the senior is uh, regarding the pandemic and how they are navigating it. We've also uh, adopted a wellness uh, strategy and have a, a session available to seniors weekly where they can come and also share in a group setting uh, the issues of the day, what's of interest to them, and third, we're doing more collaboration with organizations throughout the county who have also developed uh, virtual programming that supports uh, emotional and mental health. And so we provide this information in addition to our regular classes that we offer as a department. And then what would you say to our active senior population who now find themselves socially isolated, physically inactive or alone? I would say to the seniors to make sure that they keep in touch with their family and friends, um, even uh, making sure that they have a trusted physician that they can um, reach out to with questions. Uh, 
Um, and then maintaining a sense of purpose is so critical during this time. This is not uh, the first time that uh, difficulties have um, been experienced by Americans, by older adults. So pulling from their wisdom of how they've navigated through a difficult situation, although it might not have been a pandemic, and them sharing that with the next generation can be so impactful to the community and um, help all of us get through this pandemic together. Okay, Ladisa, close it out for me. There is no one size fits all to addressing uh, social isolation. Uh, but if your viewers are interested in some of the programs that we offer, I encourage them to email us at seniorservices at FultonCountyGA.gov or give us a call at our star line at 404-613-6000. Ladisa Onilagu, Senior Services Director again. Good to see you. Thanks so much. I enjoy speaking to your viewers today. Thank you. And up next, an update on the effort to help get people back to work. Stay with us. An update now on a story we recently shared with you. Fulton County residents impacted by the economic fallout of the pandemic, well, they're getting some free computer training. Chairman Rob Pitts took a tour of one of the Goodwill Career Training Centers that is offering this free help. The program coordinated by Select Fulton is enabling recently laid off and unemployed workers industry recognized certifications in digital literacy. We now have a program uh, capitalized with $5 million of the CARES money for uh, this purpose. And the great news is that we were able to partner with uh, Goodwill and with the Metro Chamber. One of the things that we know and we know very well is that the government cannot do it alone. So with the help and the support of uh, Goodwill and of course the Metro Chamber, this is going to be a very, very successful program for us. And for, but more importantly, when I say for us, it's really um, the uh, probably approximately 3,000 residents of Fulton County who lost their jobs but will be able to take advantage of this program and be able to, to acquire a skill that they otherwise would not have had but for uh, this CARES Act, but for Fulton County, but for Goodwill Industries, and but for the Chamber of Commerce. And our goal is to get per a person a job, a better job, and then a career, the ABC approach. So a guy like me who's doing a lot of Zoom meetings right now, I'm starting up one of these uh, digital learning programs myself so I can better manage myself on Zoom. And that's the type of training we're teaching everybody. And again, free of charge. So with Fulton County particularly, what we're excited is that they want to make sure that their residents have every sort of resource and every opportunity to be successful. And that's what we do here at Goodwill of North Georgia. When they need more basic training, we uh, adapt them here at the Goodwill Career Center so they can learn all the trades, so they can be better and be more marketable. And then we try to find them the best paying job possible. Oh, it's going to help me actually a lot because people look for this stuff. Every time I look for a job, and apply for a job, they ask if I'm proficient in Microsoft Office, Microsoft you know, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and things like that. Residents can access both the online or in-person courses. Visit Career Services at ging.org or call 844-344-WORK. Fulton County is making its final push to get everyone counted in the 2020 census. Fran Calhoun is back again this week with how they are trying to get the final communities counted. Fran is the Intergovernmental Affairs Division Manager. Fran, thanks again for being here. So let's pick up where we left off last time. Now we understand that there are still some areas of the county that have not responded to the 2020 census. How is the census team dealing with low response areas? Well, we are taking the census message directly to the people. In addition to the amplified messages that we have uh, released over our airwaves, we are going into neighborhoods. We are going to re retailers, to restaurants where you have the delivery and pickup services. And we're going to apartments. We have found that there is a disproportionate number of renters, of uh, folk who 
uh, move around a lot who may not have received their census mail or earlier this year. And so we are leaving door hangers. Uh, of course, we are interacting with folk, uh, utilizing CDC guidelines and social distancing and alike. But we are trying to get that message out that the census is still going on, that it's not too late, but urging residents to complete the census today immediately uh, before the deadline. You know, we are just days away. And so we know that we have to get everyone counted uh, to self-respond is the best way because we can accurately determine the number of persons in that household and the age of those persons. And the age is important because we have residents who may be seniors. We want to make sure we have dollars for transportation services. If there are children in those homes, we want to make sure that we have dollars coming back to us for schools and for daycare and for free lunch programs, for children's health insurance. All of those quality of life um, issues and programs and services depend on having that accurate data. And so we will continue until the deadline uh, to go into those communities and take that message directly to the residents. And let's make one more push. Tell our audience what they can do to ensure that they and their families are counted. Absolutely. They can go to my2020census.gov and they can complete the census online. Most folk can complete it in five minutes or less. Certainly, you know, if they have a larger family, it may take about 10 minutes, but it is critically important. They can also call. There is a toll-free number that they can call from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. There are operators standing by and available to receive our residents' call. And that number is 1-844-330-2020. Again, 844-330-2020. We encourage every resident, every household to get counted today. And we also encourage them to then call a family, family member, to call a neighbor, and to make sure that they have completed the census Georgia lost $3 billion in the last decade because we didn't count all of our residents. We can't afford to have our, our budget shorted. Uh, we can't afford to not have services and programs available as we attempt to recover from this economic crisis that we are currently in. And in order to be able to do that and to have equity in our communities, to make sure that everyone is served, we need everyone to get counted by those ways. It's easy, it's fast, it's optimized for your cell phone. You can pull it up and be done in a matter of minutes in order to ensure that we get a decade of, of federal dollars that will support our communities. All right, thanks again, Fran. Folks, remember the deadline is September 30th at 11.59 p.m. So the 30th is the final day that persons can go online and complete that questionnaire. And when we come back, how Fulton is helping the film industry get back to lights, camera, and action. Stay with us. Well, Fulton County joins the state of Georgia in welcoming back the film industry after the long hiatus caused by the pandemic. The Fulton Films Office began approving permits for production companies wanting to film or stage projects on the outside of county facilities. The external use only permits began with a multi-day production at the Palmetto Senior Center. We want to make sure that we keep our county venues and production crews safe. So providing film opportunities only on the outside of our county facilities does just that. Fulton County is enforcing the state's film office pandemic protocol. In addition to its own county safety measures, companies can contact the film office directly for more details or apply for a permit on the county's film app online. And before we go, our reminder that FGTV wants to connect with you online. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also check us out anytime on our YouTube channel, but please do us a favor and subscribe.
Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.